to we need to add some script to modify our ninja. So I have asset scripts open. So I'm going to right click in here in my folder that's called scripts and I'm going to create a C sharp script. I like C sharp. And I'm going to call it Ninja Controller. Of course, you notice there were other languages you could program it in. I particularly really like the C-sharp language, and so that's why I like to use it. I'm more comfortable with it. If you've programmed in Java or C, um, you will find the syntax is really close. And so it's a good language to work with. So what we're going to do is we're going to double-click this Ninja Controller script so we can edit it. It's going to open a Mono Behavior, a program designed to, to write your scripts. Okay, so here's Mono Develop. You may occasionally have something like this happen. You might have an error that says something like Assembly C Sharp Load Failed. If you get this, just right click on it, tell it to reload. Um, I think this has to do with I'm using version control and I have different branches and every time I try to open a new branch, it, it tends to give me this problem. So we're gonna look at our Ninja controller and I'm gonna zoom in on here and resize the window. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a couple variables for our character. Okay, first of all, when you create variables, if you're gonna use them in the game, you wanna create them, what we would call in the class, outside of start and update. Anything that you want uh, publicly available, you make public. You choose the data type it's going to be. If we're going to use, we're going to use a velocity for jump, and we're going to use it as an integer. So we're going to create public int jump. Public means it's accessible. In um, it's other items, other objects can see this variable's value, and we will be able to control it in Unity. In fact, let's just go ahead. I'm going to build this script. You can type F8 or click build, and then I'm going to just minimize this. And uh, let's look at the ninja, and we need to add his, the script to the ninja. Okay, if you click on here, we had an I issue here. I'm just going to start over. Um, I'm just going to remove that component. When you have a script, you want to add it. You just make sure you select the object. You click the script and drag it into the inspector on the right. And watch what happens when I, I just need to build this script now. And I probably need to save it. And there's a line endings. I'm going to just click convert. And I'm going to build it one more time. I'm going to go back to Unity. And there. Now that I'm back in Unity, once I just click this down again, you can see the value of jump. So we can give it a value in here. And then we can change that value later. So what jump is about is we're going to apply um, we're going to apply basically a vector to our object, and the vector has distance and direction. Since it's a 2D game, a vector, distance and direction, um, the direction is set by the x and y value. The distance or the magnitude um, is going to be set by what number we give it. So jump is going to be applied just to the upward vector. So let's go ahead and go back to our script and finish this out and use it. Um, we're also going to have a vector for speed, so we're going to make another one. It's also going to be an int. This is going to be determined its left, left and right uh, speed. Um, we'll probably adjust that later. And then there's one other thing we want to do is we want to determine whether our character is grounded, in other words, standing on a platform or not. So we're going to give it another value. This time, we're not going to say it's public. We're just going to put bool grounded. And what, we're going to, and what that means is because we didn't put public, this is a private variable. So the only thing that has any access to this variable is this ninja controller CS. So this is only for use inside of the script. We're not going to use any start yet. We'll do that in a little bit. But what we need to do is um, we're going to go down.
and we're gonna go into the update mode. I'm gonna tab over. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna want to basically move up if we press a key press. And so we need to determine what the key press is gonna be. So we're gonna use input. And we're gonna get key down. So we can only do a single press at a time. We set the key code. And this time we're gonna make it the up arrow. Okay, so if the up arrow is pressed down, we're gonna wanna jump up. Wrong one. So in order to jump, we need to get the rigid body because that's the thing in charge of jumping. So we're gonna get component and the component is rigid body 2, 2D, okay? And then we need our two, we need two parentheses just like this. And we're going to put dot velocity. And now we're going to set the velocity equals. Okay. I'm going to close this window now. So you have a little bit more room. So we're going to say the velocity equals, and we're going to give this velocity a vector. So it's a new vector two. And what in, an, in a vector two, we need to give it an X velocity and a Y velocity. Well, the thing is the X velocity is we want to keep it whatever it was before. So we need to get a component again. And we're running out of room. So I'm just going to go down to the next line and I'm just going to hit enter here. And this is the rigid body again. Up 2D. And now we're just going to get the velocity. It's X velocity, like so. And then, now we're, what we're doing is we're applying a new velocity to it. So the new velocity is whatever the X velocity is, it stays the same. That's why we got the component. However, we're going to add jump to that. And now let's go ahead and test it and see if this is working so far. So I'm going to type F8 to build. And remember, we gave jump a value of four. And let's just see if it works. Let's double check the script, make sure I know which key I'm doing. Get key down. All right, I had a little issue because I forgot to save the script. So you want to save it. And now I've got an error. Hold on, let's fix it. Okay, whenever you get an error, it won't let you run it. So you click on here and you can see it's expecting a oh, closing curly brace. I forgot to close this curly brace. So I'm just going to go to the end of this line and close it there. I'm going to type F8 again. Convert the line endings. Still says there's an error. Let's test to see what that is. Could not be saved. Well, that I'm not sure what we can do about that if it's not letting me save it. All right, I don't know why. I just had to retype in the input. I ran it. I have no errors. I do have a warning because I created this variable. We haven't used it yet, but that's okay. Let's go ahead and test it out now. Go ahead, uh, save it. Okay, it's already saved. So we'll go back to Unity. Hopefully now it'll let me run it. Click play. So the up arrow should make him jump. And there he goes. Now we do have a problem because if I just keep pressing it up, he just keeps going up. So we need to make it so he can only jump when he's grounded. And in this case, all we have to do is one simple thing. We, re we will not do any of this unless we already are grounded. So we're going to add another if. And we're going to put if grounded. In other words, if the value of grounded is set to true. Don't forget to surround the get component velocity with curly brackets right here. So this is what update should look like, but let's test it out. F8 to build. 
It should automatically save it when it's done. Build successful. Go back here. Press play again. And then the trick is, can you jump when you're in the air? Of course, now it's not jumping. Hey, guys. Shh. Sorry. By the way, I'm just going to, I'm going to video. So what we need to do is a way to check to see if we're grounded. And if we are, then we're going to set grounded to true. And we're going to use that, um, tr uh, we're going to use the trigger. And so the trigger has a couple of methods that go with it. And so it's on trigger, enter, 2D, because it's a 2D trigger. And uh, basically, if your trigger is intersecting a box collider, um, if it wasn't before and then intersects it, this triggers basically the on trigger enter 2D. So in this case, we're going to set grounded to true. All right, so we're going to go ahead and build it again and test it one more time. And by landing on the platform it should set grounded to true and it should allow us to now jump press up he jumps however we need a way to change grounded to false and that's when we exit the trigger it looks like this We set grounded to false so that the moment we leave the platform, we can no longer jump until we land on another platform. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and test it out with our ninja. So he should only be able to jump when he's been grounded. So I jump up. As soon as I jump up, I'm hitting as many times as I can and he just only goes when he's touching. So we're pretty much done with the first part of the script and, in the, and here is what we did to update. And um, so we, if the key, the up arrow is being pressed, we check to see if we're grounded. If we're grounded, we apply a new vector to our velocity. We keep X, which is left and right velocity, exactly as it was before, but we add eight to the jump or add whatever value we put it in there to it, um, and that sends them up. And then if, uh, but the only way we can go is if grounded is set to true. By default, it starts at false, and then as soon as we enter a trigger, in other words, that trigger collides with the uh, box collider on the platform, we change grounded to true, so it can jump. So in this case, if we press it while we're on it, we jump, but the moment we leave that platform, the grounded is now set to false, and we can no longer jump until we're back on a platform again. So let's, uh, so there you have it. And so go ahead and stay tuned on the next video. We'll cover how do we animate when we jump.